hi guys so welcome back to my channel and if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing so i would like to first congratulate myself with the number of subscribers i have attained so far so yeah it has been a long journey i remember i started with uh, one subscriber but now look at me i now have this number of subscribers so to start this video um uh, i would like you to start by watching my playlist entitled how to predict market direction and enter a trade so please you should first watch that you should first watch that playlist so it is called how to count btmm levels using moving averages and then it is also another video entitled how to count btmm levels using the tdi and then it is also a top down analysis video and then btmm entries video and then you can now proceed to watch this video which you are watching now <laughs> so yeah after this video you can also add to your you can also watch the the video entitled powerful tdi trading strategy and also the issue of using ict so this video uh, so for this video you can actually <coughs> so for this video you can actually combine ict and btmm so this video i've entitled this video a uh, how to use higher time frame bias or i can actually say how to predict the market direction or how to draw projections before they even happen and this is all possible if you know how to count levels and you are familiar with the ICT. So, right. So, this video, uh, before I talk about anything, I would like to first give a recap of what I have taught so far on my YouTube channel. So, if, if you are new, uh, this will help you or oh, or you can actually watch those videos and then we'll start from there. So market recap, I said for you to on my how to count level using the TTI, I said if there is a red and yellow cross on the TTI, that gives you the bias. And I said on M15, you must expect to see a what? A shark fin. So I said a shark fin can be used to determine the highest point which the market will pull back up to number one. And also it may mean that that is the first leg on what? On M15. Please, if you haven't watched these videos, you should really go and watch this video. And, and then I said on M5, you will see that there will be a 50 and 200 crossover am i is, is that making sense you will see a 50 and 200 crossover and also you will see that the tdi will be what will be oversold so the tdi will be oversold but that is not important we are more concerned about the 50 and 200 crossover if you are using the h1 time frame and then on m1 now this is in new information on m1 we expect to see all three levels so what do i mean by three levels or oh, let me say you expect to see a level three so what is a level three if you don't know what a level three is you should also go and watch my video but i know that most people who watch these videos they are familiar with the btmm if you are not well 
these videos caters for everyone. So if to see that you're in level three, you either see number one in 800 and a 200 crossover, or you see a, a 50 and an 800 EMA crossover, or you may actually see a what EMA is faint out. So to give an example, uh, oh, and before I go on to give examples, if you do not have a Deriv account, go on the description description below and consider creating a what a Deriv account where you can trade boom and crash volatility indices V100, V, V10S, and all those other instruments, and also. At this point, I'll go on to look at examples. So my example number, I'll give a one example from the currencies and then one example from the what from indices because people love indices. People love indices, and lots of questions. I've seen lots of questions which will be so. How do you count levels on on, on indices? Is it possible to count levels on indices? Yes, it is possible to count levels on what? On indices. So let me, my first example, I will use C500. So C500, I will use what? The H1 time frame. So on the H1 time frame, as usual, I said you must first see a red and yellow crossover. That gives you a bias that you are what? The bias of the trend so it said that you are going up or you are going down and so for this one at this point you can see that the red crossed to be above the yellow line so we're what we're going up so what you do you wait for a recross of the what of the price line in the what in the red line the signal line so at this point you are now anticipating we are not saying that the price will what will cross over and it is at this point so let me do like this so we are now focusing on this what on this point because that's where uh, you see the price line and the signal line cross over so I said, if you go on M15, you see a what? You see a shark fin. So let me go on M15. There is our shark fin. I said on M5. So if you see a shark fin on M5, we want to see a 50 and 200 crossover. It is very important. It it forms the very basis of counting levels or when you should count levels if you are trading with the btmm you don't just count levels and say i would like to count levels starting from here you have to have a starting point so as for me a shark fin has been given so you go on what you go on m5 time frame so on m5 we said we want to see a what a 50 and so it's no longer clear a 50 and 200 remember if you have seen the template video a 50 a 200 since i'm using a black background it's the white line and the 50 is this light blue one and this is the 800 ema don't confuse this one so the light blue one and the 50 is crossed so this is what 50 and 2 200 cross off which is level 2 on what on m5 so remember on h1 if you are using h1 it's h1 Bias M15 shark fin M5 15 200. You are in level two. You are expected that the market will always reverse on level two on one on M5. And then if you are using M1, you know that the market will reverse on level three. Does that make sense? So that is why people say you can actually count levels starting from any time frame, but you need to have a starting point or a time frame where you are analyzing from. You don't just start from whatever point and then you say, I will start from there. No, you have to have a line of thinking. It, it you have a process. You don't just get into the market because remember, it's a business. So I'll mark the what? 
5200 so if you go on m1 you see what three levels how do you see that is three levels level or oh, it's on level three level three is marked by either 800 and 200 crossover which is what what happened there as you can see this is our 200 and 800 200 and 800 crossover this is our light blue this is our dark blue i said dark blue is what 800 ma so on m1 you'll be what over you'll be on level three so i said on m5 sometimes the the ri the tti is not really important however it can help in the confluences or in the uh, let me say the conditions and at which you may actually what at which you can actually buy or sell a what an instrument so at this point you can see that the price line reached the what the oversold region so i said h1 buyers m15 you give a shark fin m5 you expect a 15 200 crossover at the same time you expect to see which which may or may not be may not happen you you may see a what an oversold price line and but it's not really important the important part is you have to see a 50 and 200 crossover it is very important to see that if you don't see it the conditions may not happen but if sometimes maybe you see a 50 and 200 crossover and then the price line is not oversold you may also consider taking a trade but if you don't see a 50 and 200 crossover the conditions are not met so please do not trade this is very important uh, when i now talk about the h4 time frame and then moving on to the daily time frame so for now so i said m5 you see 5200 in, in an oversold price line and then on m1 you expect to see what level three so these forms this is the same for every pair you see out there and it's always the same whether it's currencies it's stocks it's nasdaq every market indices volatility indices it's always the same so let me go on and give the second example so that you 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 see for yourself that these conditions will always happen so why why am i saying will always happen remember if you are to trade a certain strategy the conditions at which you enter a trade should not differ from one another they should always be the same if you say i trade when this and this happens the conditions should be met every single time every single time so let me go on to the second example so like i said i said i'm going to give a second example and the example will be from a what currencies market so here is our what our example at this point so remember i said h1 gives buyers m15 we expect an oversold m5 we expect to see a 15 200 which is level 2 plus or minus an oversold rsi or oversold price line on the tti right and then we expect to see three levels on what on m1 always remember this is the point on on c500 we saw the very same thing now our on currencies we're seeing the same thing so m15 i marked with that vertical line i said you see in shark fin there is our shark fin and then on m5 i said you see what 50 and 200 where's our 50 there is our 50 and 200 crossover the rsi is also what oversold the price line is oversold which is the very same thing let me go 21 july so there you see we have got uh, 200 moving there 800 is moving there you always see this setup all the time so when should you start counting levels you can actually anticipate that at this very same point 
the market will give me three levels. So this helps one to be able to know when they should count levels. When the when part is very important when you, you, you are using PTM, when you should count levels. You don't just count levels. You need to have certain uh, conditions met before you count level. You don't just say if, yeah, 15, 200, level 2, 800, what are level? No, no, no. You have to have a system you use. So here, yeah, as you can see, the market what? Reversed. Right. <clears throat> now that we've cleared out uh, these examples, these form the very basis of how you then see your mentors or your people who inspire you in the chain of Forex, how they actually draw market projections. And you're like, ah, how did this guy know that the market will reverse the, how did this, did this guy know that the market will form this. They started from this very same concept or this very same approach. So I'll move on to use the what? The H4 time frame. Now, most people prefer using the H4 time frame. And as, you, as I will explain, you'll see why. So at this point, you now know when you should count levels you don't just count levels so if you are using h1 time frame you know that you have to have three levels on the one minute time frame that's why you see other people they'll be tra trading m1 and you'll be like ah how did this guy know they are using this very same concept only that you don't know about it please if you haven't subscribed at this point i don't know what you what I must do for you to subscribe. So please subscribe, like, and share my video. So moving on to the four hour, four hour time frame example. Right. As for our four hour time frame examples. So if you are using a four hour time frame, it means that you now anticipate to see level 3 on what? On the M5 time frame. Remember, if you are using the H1 time frame, you expect to see three levels on the M1 time frame. So, this forms the very basis of when you should actually anticipate levels on what? on a specific time frame you don't just say i know people get confused when they are counting levels on let's say they are given homeworks to count levels on h1 and on m15 and whatnot and whatnot the confusion now starts of when should they then make a trading decision then they suffer a what in analysis a yeah, dilemma so to say so right um now I'm on the four hour time frame. Here we have seen that on the TTI the bias was given. So we start from the bias. If you are analyzing, let's say if you want to use a four hour time frame, we start from the TTI and then we expect the price line and the signal line to do a crossover. So I said on now. So we're using the same approach on H1. We were saying bias. On M15, remember these are the, the time frames used in the PTMM. If you don't know how to use them, please watch my video on a PTMM template and then moving averages where I explain the moving averages concept and then how to count levels using the what? The moving averages. So that it really makes sense. The time frames which are used in the PTMM strategy so if you don't understand please do so right now before you are watch before watching this video because you you'll be confused so now on if you're using h4 i said h4 bias so you are using the same approach only that we are now it's starting from h4 and then we are going uh, down so from h4 bias h1 shark fin m15 I know someone saying why not M3 go back to the 
template video and then the moving average is used in the ptmm all are on my channels on my channel if you haven't subscribed again please do subscribe and support my channel so on h4 the bias was given so we are now moving on to h1 we expect to see a shark fin there is our shark fin on m15 on m15 now we expect we now expect to see the conditions which we were now which we were expect so if we are now going on m15 we are now thinking we are now using so on h1 we we're saying on m5 that's where we expect to see a 50 and 200 crossover and an oversold plus an oversold a uh, price line on the tdi so on m15 now since we are using h4 we expect to see a 50 200 crossover which is right there and then we are now we expect to see an oversold what price line so you see the approach is the same if you don't understand how to count levels you don't know what you are doing <laughs> so please guys i think i've explained the concept so on m15 i said you expect to see a 50 and 200 crossover plus or minus an oversold what a price line most people however prefer to see these these two conditions met a 50 and 200 crossover plus an oversold what plus an oversold price line on the tdi however for me it's not really necessary to see a what to see an oversold price line on the what on the tdi but it's very important to see a 50 and 200 crossover on the what on the m15 yes it helps to see an oversold what oversold price line because like i explained on my video on on the of which i entitled powerful tti trading strategy i explained the issue of an oversold price line and how you can actually manipulate it to make trades so it's the same concept so this is how people you will see that ah someone will be saying oh yes i'm now expecting to see a v25 to buy and then they draw their nice w you know how it is btmm mentors and it is it is you know forex traders are uh, you've got pride <laughs> you know them so yeah this is the concept on m15 is expect to see a what 50 200 so it means on m5 if you go on m5 you expect to see level three so where was our level three there was our level three right so sometimes if you see an oversold price line on m15 on m5 you will sometimes see a what see an oversold market baseline so that's why most people they are able to anticipate using the btmm because most of them use an oversold what market baseline the yellow line they know that it will reach 32 or it will reach 68 remember don't forget my rsi setting here is 21 but other people they use 13 so that's why people prefer to see on m15 a what a 50 200 crossover plus a what an oversold price line on the tdi however the oversold price is not really important because btmm remember is based on what on counting levels right so yeah on levels i think i i've said enough so if you want to count levels on m5 you must analyze on what on h4 so that you anticipate that's how most people are able to anticipate so to give an example i had given a one indices example so i'll also give a one what one currencies example so that it makes sense to some people who are confused right now right so yeah guys i think i've explained the when you should count levels using the ptmm part if you are still confused don't forget i now have a telegram 
channel where we can discuss and if there are no issues to discuss guys don't expect to see anything i'll also probably send my withdrawals there because remember forex is all about withdrawals it's not really yes set up set up yes but we want to see the man where is the money going we want to see what you are using the money for yes you have seen people on instagram on facebook posting beautiful results but then they are not even able to buy themselves shoes so what's the point i don't get the point there if you are a zimbabwean i, I think you know what i'm talking about and then i i'm not familiar with the other areas because i'm from i'm from zimbabwe so let me go on to look for a what a currency example you see that the approach is the same as for entries i think i have taught enough i went on to talk about the breakup block pattern i also use the h1 there is a video on entries of doing top down analysis i think i have explained enough on, on, on the entries part so if you are not familiar with anything please feel free to contact me also subscribe so let me look for a what an example on the currencies right for my second example i will use the four hour time frame on the usd zarp so i think for by now it's quite clear where i'm going with this so on h1 so for h4 i said h4 is for analysis or directional bias and then h1 you expect to see a shark fin and then on m15 we expect to see a 50 and 200 crossover plus or minus an oversold what an oversold price line as you can see the it is and then on m5 you expect to see all three levels so if they ask you when or if you are given by other mentors a homework of drawing a homework of drawing levels this is a simpler way you can actually subscribe to my channel and cheat your way to your mentor <laughs> so yeah guys it's simple as that it's simple as that here you can see the 800 and 200 crossover you also see the mpl reached and oversold the market baseline reached oversold region here remember we are now we were intending to sell so the mpl you see it's at 68 there so yeah that's how people say oh project start projecting you see a nice diagram with the w and m and then or you see market projection whereby they are now they, they tell you that guys sell what so and so pay we want to teach people to trade for themselves don't say yeah i was scammed by whosoever yeah, we have heard such stories from especially from south african people I, yeah because uh, south african people they really know how to trade guys those guys but uh, some of them people will be saying ah that that guy is a scammer so and so but i think guys if someone is making money you should let them make money it's all about withdrawals we don't want to see your screenshots yes screenshots 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 but remember at the end of the day you should watch we want to see a withdrawal we want to see you living a good life not i'll give a zimbabwean example so yeah i know most people start to trade for especially zimbabwean people when they are in varsit yeah in varsit because sometimes life is tough so you see someone is unable to buy themselves lunch <laughs> and you want and they call themselves a trade ah dude we are failing you should do something so i think if you you benefit from my video you'll be able to make something out of your life so yeah guys this was an example for h4 so by now you have seen how people can actually anticipate levels and you have seen them reversing very well i can actually uh, look for another example but my video is now already 29 or 30 something minutes so yeah guys it's not too much but anyway let me look for let me now go to the daily time frame and show you how 
the big boys do it so on the daily time frame so before i give examples on the what on the daily time frame by now i think it's now clear that if you are using the h4 time frame you can actually anticipate that you get three levels on the m5 time frame if you are using h1 time frame you can anticipate that you what you get three levels on m1 so if you want to do scalping what not what not you can use your h1 you know that it will give all those nice nice setups quickly you are using m1 time frame it's quick and easy you know that it's just get in you count your levels and then you are out it's really that simple if you are using now if you are using a what the daily time frame so the daily time frame remember a daily time frame is the time frame of analysis h4 you are anticipating a shark fin and then on h1 remember it's always a 50 200 crossover plus or minus an oversold price line and then on m15 you expect to see all three levels if you want to trade or count the levels let's say you have been given a homework by your mentor you can actually analyze using the what the daily time frame it's straightforward and you give your mentor three levels on what of what three levels on the daily time frame and remember btmm is all about what counting levels so what i've done now i've given you a good skeleton you can now put your own flesh your own strategies because remember if you are now in level three you can now use any strategy and it will work because you know that it's level three any strategy you use at that particular point will work out whether you use the moving average the oversold thing you are using stochastic whatever you can now start using your whatever strategy at that point but note that at this point i have given you proper way of counting levels if you are still confused ah well i don't know what to do and if you are happy about this video please subscribe share like comment give me a th thumbs up guys and show some love so yes moving on to yeah if i know by now you'll be tired 30 something minutes long video if you don't want i am sure the on if you are using daily time frame the concept is the same however if you still want to continue let's continue so on daily time frame the concept is what is the same uh, you get the bias from what from the using the daily time frame remember I always give one example for indices one example for currencies and also i'll give an example on on nasdaq because i know people asking how do you count levels on indices how do you count levels and i think i've explained everything on this channel if you are still confused don't forget my telegram group is there my inbox whatsapp and also if you want to create a trading account be it for trading nasdaq for trading indices for trading currencies just check my description below and get sorted everything will be sorted so on daily time frame daily time frame gives the bias h4 will always give a shark fin h1 will always give a 50 and 200 crossover plus or minus an oversold price line note i'm saying plus or minus because the, the price line does not really matter you can actually so if you're using the daily time frame you can actually use your ict because you know that at those points the market will always respect your analysis it's the same concept which i which i have been teaching from h1 now on, on daily if you want to go on monthly personally i don't use the monthly time frame or the weekly time frame because i think 
it will take if you are using those ones you are now predicting maybe for the whole year or you are now predicting maybe for the next two years or something i don't know because with the daily time frame it it, it is possible now so example i'll look for yeah let's just start with this pay i'm i'm looking at right now the stzt pay so <coughs> On yesterday, the bias was given there. You can see the, the red line cross the yellow line. So we are now what uptrend. On H4, we expect to see a what? A shark fin, like I said. Then on H1, on H1, we expect to see a what? 5200 crossover. Plus or minus a what? An oversold price line. Here you can see nothing happened, but there it is, guys. On on M15, on M15, you expect to see level three. So there is our level three. You can actually start what buying. So what else do you want? I've showed you a proper way of counting levels. If you are still confused, well, guys, I've tried. I've tried my best. I've tried everything. So this is how you do it guys. Also let me do a second example which is fast. This time I'll be fast guys, promise. So which one Euro JPY? Which one? Which one do you want? Euro JPY. Yeah, I actually saw a mentor who traded this one. It was a good setup. Trust me, it was a good setup. So right here the bias was given there so all of this were what we're anticipating a reversal so this we're expecting to see so on h4 it shark fin as usual on h1 we expect to see a what 50 200 crossover plus or minus don't forget the plus or minus 50 200 crossover plus or minus an over so what price line and then you can count three levels on what on m15 so level three you've counted you see it reversed that's how people do it so you see people they now start you see also there was an order block there I'm sure by now you know how to draw order blocks. People will be using a Fibonacci. So they say this was a breaking market structure. And then the 50% level on the Fibonacci is there. So you can take any of the year we're selling. So any green candles going up, you can actually draw your, what, your order blocks. But anyway, that's topic for another day. That's how people anticipate in everything. But the concept is what is really the same. Oversold, you get a clear M. Also, if you were to use order blocks on H1, you can see that higher high, higher low, higher high, break of structure there and, and then a return to order block. You see this? All came, came there and then the next one came all the way there. So that's how people combine and the pay is still selling. And, and I anticipate that it will sell for a, a very long time. So yeah, let me go to give an example on what? On Nasdaq. Yeah, another name for Nasdaq is US Tech. So we can use we can use this one so i said red close yellow i think by now you are now famous you should be singing with me right now so on h4 we expect to see what a shark fin though we got this little thing there and then on h1 it's all about levels guys that's how you count levels levels 50 200 you see a 50 200 plus or minus and over so what are a price line and here we had an oversold what 
we go on M15, we expect to see three levels. So where was it? 800 is there, 200, probably they cross there. Here we didn't have it. But don't forget that we are not using really the MPL to make a trading decision or the TTI. We are using the levels. And then you can actually choose a time frame and then you can start to say, because remember I told you that the first leg is marked by what? A red line crossing. So if you are using, let's say you know that on M15, you anticipate to see three levels. You can actually start from the M15 to count levels going up because the levels, you know that the all the three levels are now complete and you are, expecting a what a reversal it's really that simple guys so i know people complicate these things but i think i've explained enough also people will be asking how do you count levels on what in volatility indices because remember most people have got challenges trading volatility indices so let me look for maybe two examples or three examples for what for volatility indices Right, my example for volatility indices is V10. So at this point, let, let us draw, mark the point there. Right, the bias was given. So on H4, we anticipate a what? A shark fin. You can see, oh, yeah, it didn't quite work out if you are checking the TTI. And then if you go on H1, you anticipate a 50, 200 crossover plus or minus a what? An oversold price line of the TTI. Yeah, it wasn't met. And then if you go on M15, on M15, remember 50, 200 crossover is level 3. So you can now anticipate to see a what? Buying. You can now anticipate to see some buys. Remember, if you watch BTMM entries, I explained everything quite clearly. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, let me finish with looking at what? At V50. You can anticipate to see a buy on the V50. Why? So, here, the bias was given, right? price line of recross so on h4 we are now anticipating a what a shark fin a shark fin as you can see on h4 is 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 there you can actually see the shark fin right now on h4 if you go on h1 i said you expect to see a 50 200 crossover plus or minus a what an oversold price line if you check the tdi the price line is has been oversold if you want to do shortcuts you can of course that method i think is a it can work if you use an ict trader so you can check out my video on powerful tti trading strategy you can actually use that method or you can actually use the btmm way of saying if there is the red line crossing mpo on mp because we now on M15, we are now in what? In level 3. And we can now start anticipating the what? That a W will form. So that's how it is, guys. That's how it is. BTMM is the way to go, guys. If you are having any challenges, you can actually use the H1 time frame if you want. Or you can use, depending on your capital, of course. And I have seen that most people, if they have got low capital, they use V7, 5 one is to trade so yeah guys thank you please subscribe like share my video i think i've delivered a good presentation i've so the objectives of this video were to number one be able to what to anticipate or predict the market direction so how do you anticipate or predict the market direction if you are able to count levels? So I said if you are using H1, you know that on M1, if you are using H1, you know that there will be three levels or not on M1 time frame. If you are using H4, so that will give you basis of prediction, right? That will give you basis of prediction. So I think it's quite straightforward. 
if you have any questions my telegram group is there check on the description below if you don't have a trading account be it for volatility indices also check the link there if you want to check my bio or contact me everything is is there on my channel please do so feel free please come with good questions not ask some weird funny questions so yeah thank you guys for watching this video to the end thank you thank you thank you see you next time and also consider subscribing thank you very much